What's going on Wolfpack, my name is Denaric Dingo here, bringing you another wacky reacty video on the states and territories of Australia explained. Okay, <laughs> enough of that, but this is a geography now video of course. Now I know some people are saying, oh, oh, you did the accent wrong, oh my god, I'm so offended, oh the humanity, okay, whatever dude, <laughs> let me have some fun for once. Uh, but yeah, states and territories of Australia. Explained. Now, I can give you a TLDR if you guys want to <coughs> of, of the states and territories of Australia. Explained. Okay. Uh, one part starts as New Holland and the eastern part starts as uh, the New South Wales territory. Okay. And afterwards, uh, New Holland starts renaming itself to uh, the Sw Swan River County or something like that. And afterwards, it's named to Western Australia, generically, while over to the east, uh, New South Wales uh, starts, you know, divvying up its territory after populations start rising, and it gives birth to South Australia after a while. But oddly enough, Tasmania was not called Tasmania back in the day. For some reason, when it started off, it was called Van Diamonds or Van Diemens, like island, D I E. M A N Van Diemen or Diamond. I don't know. It must be like a German origin name or something like that. But that was before it became Tasmania. Now over the western Western Australia remains Western Australia. There's Southern Australia, and then Northern Australia gets made, but then gets vetoed by the uh, the Queen of England at the time. I think it was Queen Victoria at the time. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Might have been the Victorian era. True, but then she vetoes it. There's no Northern Australia for now. And after a while, uh, the southern tip of New South Wales uh, is called simply Victoria. I'm assuming from Queen Victoria, generically. Again, uh, after a while, you get uh, Queensland, and then you have to Southern Australia, South Australia, the territory, uh, consists of just the entire central bit of Australia, what was called Southern Australia. And after a while, they divided to southern australia and the northern territories that were governed by the federal government they were very much you know um uh financially dependent on the federal government the territories of australia oh don't forget uh canberra as many australians kept telling me no no it's not canberra because i assumed it's read canberra huh it's B-E-R-R-A. So, of course, I'm going to assume Canberra? No, apparently it's Canberra. Okay, whatever. We'll call it Canberra. <laughs> then uh, that territory gets set up. And then you have the interesting little territory of uh, Jervis Bay. Or Jervis Bay? I don't know. Look, I'm a Bosnian trying to uh, uh, pronounce some English stuff. So cut me some slack. Jervis Bay? Jarvis Bay? I don't know, one of the, one of the two. Uh, it's only like a place with 400 people, like Jervis Base uh, Village are the only like people that live there. It's like, but it belongs, it belonged at one point for a long time at, as the Canberra territory, as an extension of the Canberra territory. And then afterwards in like 1980s, it became its own little thing. Pretty interesting. And of course, there are the islands of Australia. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, in the begin in the beginning, uh, New South Wales also administered New Zealand at the beginning. Of course, New Zealand and Australia split after all uh, for obvious reasons, logistics. It doesn't make sense for them to be a country, one country. So they uh, you know just went their own way. No big deal. Uh, then you have Christmas Island, probably the most famous island of uh, Australia. We have those giant uh, um, coconut crabs or rubber crabs robber crabs i'm pretty sure that that's how they call but they're the giant the largest crab species in the world and there you go my tldr if people didn't want to watch the the, the episode uh, i just give you a tldr but we're gonna watch it anyway <laughs> all right so finally let's talk australia i love Aussies. Finally, they're like yeah. one of the only few people in the world that can out crazy americans now we kind of already explained this in the australia video but let's just kind of recap Australia is basically divided into six states and ten federal territories, three of which are internal and seven of which are external yeah, outlying island sorry. territories. So I talked to a lot of you guys, the Aussie subscribers, you helped me write this script and gave me information, so I'm going to kind of just report back what a lot of you guys said and add my research, so here we go. New 
South Wales, capital Sydney. This is the most populous Populated. state at about 7 million. A little less than a third of all Australians live in this one state. And the capital, Sydney alone, holds about two thirds of the entire state's population. Basically, even though this was not the first place that was discovered in Australia by Europeans, it's kind of like the first place where the British started colonizing. You know this place, it has all the touristy spots. It's super diverse, you'll find a lot of Greeks and Asians and Maltese even. And Everybody, South Africans. Bosnians. Oh, and don't forget <laughs> Lord Howe Island belongs to them. In the south, it's also home to the highest peak on the mainland, Kosciuszko, and it's also the source- That's how you of pronounce that? In the country, the Murray. Uh, according it's not to navigable. Geography now, it is navigable, the Murray River, but unfortunately for them, it's not commercially navigable where you can buy it, where you can put those giant, you know, uh, ships with a bunch of uh, containers on it. It's not meant for that. And like, when people keep telling me, oh, this, this river is actually navigable, Denaric Wolf, I'm like, I'm talking about commercial navigability okay <laughs> like sure even on the the Bo bosna river in Bo in bosnia you can you know get a canoe and navigate i get on it i guess but can you put a giant you know tanker ship with large oil drums on it and whatever containers and have it float on it mm? that's harder commercially navigable rivers are pretty rare compared to the you know other rivers so i just wanted to clear that up also uh for it to be navigable it has to be at least four meters deep and uh, and not have large sentiments build up after time like on the ganges river in, in india keep brad new south welshmen love to gamble and it's kind of like a problem like half of all the bars and clubs have slot machines in general new south wales is kind of like don't the gamble core trust nucleus me. business hub it's like the uppity metropolitan unless you're really Australia. smart then you also go ahead. Uh, hugh jackman and acdc are from here queensland capital brisbane uh, i was told sometimes the people here are called banana benders because it's like you see uh I would have I would have pronounced that place Brisbane. Look, I'm sorry, okay. I don't know. <laughs> not from Australia. Like some Aussies get really mad. Oh, just now you read. Okay, I don't. I didn't know. <laughs> I would have for the whole time. I was like Brisbane. No, it's Brisbane. Because at the end is Bane, B A N E. Like you would say Bane. So I would assume Brisbane. <laughs> but uh anyway banana benders like home of australia's banana industry this dutch dude landed in cape york somewhere you know that horn of australia uh according to geography max it's where the rainforest meets the reef and it's basically like the playground of australia kind of like the florida orlando oh that know, looks cool what, what was beaches, they got the world famous great what's that thing going reef, great snorkeling just be careful though because on some of the beaches you can find box jellyfish which could kill you in minutes on top of that they got a ton of theme parks oh, yeah. and uh it the box jellyfish have like Tentacles that are meters long and they can really mess you up. Like, don't look at, you know, don't search that up. Like, people who have had injuries from those box jellyfish, box jellyfish. <laughs> now, we'll mention the the bad part about Australia. Yeah, it, most of the the most toxic creatures in the world to live in Australia. And I forgot to mention uh, during the New South Wales part, uh, that's where you find the Sydney funnel web spider according to most sources that is the most that is the deadliest spider in the world now if you if you want to find out more about it just search up brave wilderness if you're an animal fan like i am search up brave wilderness funnel web that thing is creepy as it has a potent poison that can kill you in like an hour or something but luckily there's anti-toxins nowadays and nobody has died so far like despite what people think no spiders don't kill people that often at all maybe like I think it was like five or 10 people a year die from spider bites. So that's not to say you shouldn't stay away from them. Definitely do. <laughs> it even has the tallest building in all of Australia and the Southern Hemisphere, Q1. Southern Australia, the festival state. Capital Adelaide. Uh, a lot okay, of you guys- I pronounce it correct, Adelaide. It's kind of famous for being that place where the guy murdered people and hid body parts in barrels. And the people here eat crows, which is why their mm -hmm. AFL team is the crows. That's what you guys said. I don't, okay. No, but seriously, Adelaide is sometimes called Radelaide. It was voted one of the safest oh, livable rad. cities in not only just Australia but the world. Apparently, I was told the best spider wine being also rad comes from South Australia, mostly grown in the Barossa and Clare oh. Valley. It's also oh, known yeah. for having like all those salt flats and dry lake beds. Mining is huge out here. I don't know if I ever mentioned it on the channel, but if I were to pick my favorite alcoholic beverage, I would definitely just go with wine. <laughs> I'm a wine type guy. Uh, I know Rakia. Oh, I've committed heresy and all that. I'm not a huge fan of Rakia. It's 
Rocky is pretty strong, trust me. Stronger than most people think, so I'm not a huge fan on the strong drinks, but I'm not a huge fan of the weak drinks either, like beer or something, like eh. Never really liked it, so I was always like, mm, wine, just right, you know. Not saying that wine is weak, can be very strong as well, but always drink in moderation, and wine is also one of the healthiest alcoholic beverages as well. And, you know, I have a kind of an iron deficiency, so I, <laughs> I like my wine as well. Beer, especially in Opal, and speaking of which, it's also home to Cooper Petty, the underground city. Cool. Tasmania, colloquially known as Tassie, capital Hobart. This is the only island state out of all the states, and it's made up of like one big island and like 300 smaller islands. I was told Tasmania is kind of like the butt of all the jokes for Australians. They kind of treat it as if it's like the West Virginia. Yeah, the hillbillies, Australia. I was about to say. <laughs> geography, Kelly, the people are basically bogans. bogans and two-headed <laughs> mutants. The word bogan meaning something like hillbillies. No, but that's the joke. But in all seriousness, Tasmania is actually a I'm very sure beautiful fine. place. It's known for its very unique flora and fauna. Of course, you guys all know that they're famous for having the Tasmanian devil, the largest carnivorous marsupial. Oh, it doesn't it like make Tasmanian tornadoes? Tiger, but they went extinct in the 30s. Sad. I was told they're really nice people though, and apparently they make really good cheese and whiskey. Well, I'm down for that. Victoria, the garden state. Capital, Melbourne. Not Melbourne. It is a I've been saying it. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's how you say it? I'm sorry, but if you're going to pronounce it like that, like, then just put different letters in so people know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Melbourne. No big deal. It's called Melbourne now. For my entire life, I called it Melbourne. <laughs> okay. Even in Bosnian, we don't say what he just said, Melbourne. We said. We call it Melbourne. Melbourne. Like, is this a way that Australians can easily identify people that aren't Australian? Like, they show you on a map, like, okay, how about you read me this uh, city? And, and, and you're like, people that aren't Australian would be like, Melbourne? Canberra? And then like, ah, we found the, uh, <laughs> the intruder or like the Among Us memes, whatever. <laughs> like, that's how I imagine... That goes like, why have the letters there if you're not gonna? No, oh, I, I give up. I, I just give up. Second most <laughs> populous state after New South Wales, and it is the most densely populated state. It was famous for a gold rush in the 1850s, and it was also famous for the Eureka Stockade. It was like the only armed conflict and fight against the British during colonial times. The biggest thing you guys told me Tea party. is that this is kind <laughs> of like the of Australia. of New South Wales. These people fight with New South Wales on like everything. Do Frigate, they really? AFL, rugby, even dancing like they invented the Melbourne Shuffle. Even architecture. To this day, Melbourne actually has more skyscrapers than Sydney, and they hold the second, third, fourth, and fifth tallest buildings in the country. It's like they didn't even want to give Sydney a chance. Friendly uh, competition the capital, Melbourne, is nice, there's I There's like guess. two different types of people. There's like the hardcore sports fanatics, or the hipsters. They have a huge cafe culture and like artsy scene with like live music. Otherwise, they Actually, also have cool. uh, the 12 Apostles, Phillip Island, where you can see penguins. But yeah, basically you get kind of like this artsy coffee drinking, but highly competitive state in Australia. Western Australia, capital Perth. It is the largest state area wide. Surprise, it's now pronounced up the entire Peth Western or something. Of Australia. And it's actually the second largest country subdivision in the world after the Saha Republic in Russia. About 92% of the population lives just in this little southwest corner where the green vegetation is and out of that group about 79 percent of whom live in the perth metropolitan area they are the second largest iron ore producer in the world about 46 percent of all australian exports actually come from this state alone geography keith not our keith a different keith said uh the people here are cashed up bogans it's kind of like those you know texan oil so the texas part of you know? it was Australia. also the site of the famous emu war where australians fought against emus and lost and also home to famous bubblegum pink lake hillier it's also home to the kimberley region one of the most geologically fascinating regions in all of australia rotness island where you can see those quokkas the smiling animal and uh yeah just really under Are the very channel. friendly <laughs> and now we reach the territories the australian capital territory otherwise known as act capital of this territory and the entire country canberra i will never forget there it is totally wrong in the australia video it was so embarrassing but hey 
I'm not even going to start. Redeeming myself right now. Canberra. In a nutshell, Canberra. Canberra. Okay, fine. It was kind of like the Canberra. middle point between Melbourne and Sydney, so that neither could be the capital. And they were just like, let's find a neutral ground, even though geographically it's a little closer to Sydney. The territory is small, only encompassing about 2,300 square kilometers. It's basically where you see all the government buildings, the parliament building, which actually looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. A lot yeah, of you I was guys about to say. the same thing for some reason. It is known for having lots of roundabouts, people who can't build front fences on their property, legal fire. Fireworks really? and legal pornography. I, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, that a lot of you guys wrote that, so I guess I just have to report what Regardless. The National Gallery okay. is here with a lot of cool indigenous aboriginal art. For some reason, they have a glassworks shop and you can like hunt for truffles with dogs. Okay, sure. Jervis or Jarvis Bay Territory. Many people don't even really see this as like a separate territory because it's kind of like it works with the capital. As the story goes, after Canberra was built, they were kind of like, oh crap, maybe we should have done this on the coast so that we could have access to the ocean. So in 1915, New South Wales was like, okay, you can have this little peninsula. So then they took it, but then it kind of sucked because the port didn't really function that well. And like the train leading up to it couldn't hold heavy freight cargo going up the hill. And now it's just home to like a Navy base with like 400 people. So it actually cooperates with right. the capital legislatively, <laughs> but it actually is its own separate territory. I mean, it's super small, but you can still actually do some things here. Like there's uh, whale watching, there's some shops and restaurants. But yeah, that's just about it. Small little territory. The Northern Territory, capital Darwin. Now this is basically the place that Australians are referring to when they say the outback. It is the gateway to all that interior crazy Australian It's like where most of the aboriginals like TV live or something. Magazines. Obviously it's home to the most famous natural landmark, Uluru or Ayers Rock. There's a lot of other cool natural sites too, like the Maduranka thermal pools. And even though it doesn't have the highest population of indigenous Australians, it has the highest population per capita, somewhere around 10%. And now the external offshore island territories, Ashmore and Cartier. It's basically a bunch of empty sandbanks and sand islands and coral reefs in the middle of the ocean. In 1974, Australia signed the Memorandum of Understanding. It kind of allows Indonesian fishers to go around the area and fish and go to the islands for shelter and visit grave sites. It is a marine park, however, it also kind of acts, unfortunately, as like a place for human smuggling. And the government has been kind of monitoring this area for a while. The Australian Antarctic Territory. I mean, technically no capital, but the only place of residency would be Davis Station. And it's actually the largest territorial claim on Antarctica by any nation. Uh, and yeah, basically, you know, uh, research and scientists. Uh, Nobody owns Australia, Australia technically. I mean, whaling ships that Antarctica. Antarctica. Sorry. What else can I say? I mean, Brain fart. Antarctica. <laughs> You know, you know what it is. Christmas Island, capital Flying Fish Cove. I actually did a video on this a while ago. Check it out if you want. It's a fascinating island. There's only about 2,000 people, but it's very diverse. Every year, the island experiences a huge crab migration. They even built barricades and like a bridge that they can use so that they don't get crushed by cars. They are also known for having a former detention center that held asylum seekers. But yeah, it's a pretty cool place off the beaten track. The Cocos or Keeling Islands, capital West Island. They also go by Pulu Panjang. Coco is referring to all the coconut trees that can be found on the island, and Keeling because it was named after the guy that discovered it. It's made up of 27 coral atolls, only two of which are inhabited. Altogether, there are only about 600 people, mostly Malays. They are descended from the workers that were brought over by this Scottish guy who decided to kind of, he was a merchant, he wanted to develop the islands to, for a plantation. The Coral Sea Islands. There is no capital, but the only inhabited island is Willis Island. It only has like four people on a weather station. Their job is to like monitor the weather. Other than that though, the no. only other thing you know about this place is that in 2004, there was like a bunch of protesters that tried to make their own micro nation. It was called the Gay and Lesbian Kingdom of the Coral <laughs> Sea Island. Even though it wasn't really much of a serious okay. claim, it was just more of like a political statement. It actually gained a lot of publicity. The Heard and McDonald Islands. Completely uninhabited, but Atlas Cove is kind of like the place where people go to camp out and research. Most Aussies learn that this is the only place in Australia where they have active volcanoes. It's actually closer to Africa and Antarctica than it is to Australia. Freezing cold, peaks covered in ice most of the year, and actually Mawson Peak on Heard Island is technically the tallest point in Australia, if you consider it, but yeah. Is that Speaking a of which, Mawson oh, Peak <laughs> on Heard Island actually creates this weird vortex shedding effect on the clouds when they pass by, but otherwise, yeah, the only living things on the island would be seals and penguins. You actually need permission from the Australian government to even come here because it's a nature reserve. It would be a real challenge to come here, but really cool to document it, don't you think? And finally, Norfolk Island, capital Kingston. This 
get one on that. is interesting. First of all, they are famous for the Norfolk pine, which grows here. It's even on their flag. They export it a lot, especially to mainland Australia for Christmas time. Second, just like many other places in Australia, it started as a penal colony, then it was closed down and abandoned. And then the extra mutineers from Pitcairn Island came over and resettled it. There's like 200 of them. So there's kind of like a link between Norfolk and Pitcairn. Amongst that crew were some Polynesians. They mixed in and today there's kind of like a weird fusion British slash Polynesian culture. They even speak their own Creole. And yeah, basically the people on the island today are mostly descended from those mutineers. So that's it. That's all 16 states and territories. However, I do kind of have to mention one more thing. This is probably going to offend some people, but it kind of has to be said. Australia kind of still in a way thinks New Zealand is like still theirs. According to section six of the Australia's Constitution Act, Do they says, really? the states shall mean such of the colonies of New South Wales, New Zealand, Queensland, Tasmania, Victoria, Western Australia, and South Australia. And they just kind of left it there. Well, technically they were together at one point, but they're like, from, my, from what I heard, a union state. So if you have Australian citizenship, you can go live and work in New Zealand whenever you want and vice versa. Because currently, thanks to COVID, uh, people cannot travel to and fro from Australia. Like if you want to get into Australia, can't happen. If you want to travel, if you're an Australian and want to travel elsewhere in the world, can't happen. They're super closed. Luckily, good thing they did that because uh, they have like some of the lowest COVID cases in the world. So good on them. But as a result, nobody can, you know, travel to those places unless you're a part of like New Zealand. There's an exemption for New Zealanders. They can travel to uh, Australia. That just goes to show, yeah, they're pretty close as countries. So when Kiwis see not a big deal. Like, ha, nope. Good luck, you're on your own. In the end, Australia is pretty much unlike anywhere else on Earth. I mean, can you imagine what the first European colonists must have thought when they landed on this area? They must have thought it was like a completely different planet. Like what, like hopping pouch animals and like duck-billed beaver yes. things? It really is unique, landscape-wise and people-wise. Beautiful people, great culture. Thank you for watching this video. I had fun making it. Stay cool, stay tuned. Yeah, so anyway, this was the end of... Australian states and territories explained. Look, cut me some slack. Cut me some slack. I I got I got the names wrong of the cities. <laughs> okay, when I see those letters, uh I use what I know about English to pronounce the words. I did not know they have a special special pronunciation. So, okay, just cut me some slack on that part. Uh anything else do I want to say? Uh well, Australia has some nice uh marsupials i guess that's is that how you call them like the kangaroos and uh other animals i don't know and the koalas i always wanted to be like a koala just it's hanging out in a tree just eating eucalyptus leaves all day awesome that is the that is the life but uh, i digress um yeah so that was that uh next up probably i'll do canada maybe next week because on Friday we have a I have a little another special episode coming out. So until then, uh, yeah, take care and stay tuned.